Jessica was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. When she was 21, she served a mission in Vladivostok, Vladivostok, Russia, where she met her husband, Garrett. When she graduated, she began working as a creative manager and web developer. For two years, she worked to support the family while Garrett worked on his ventures and played soccer at BYU. She now owns a few e-commerce websites that she manages on the side. She has two kids, Dorothy and Manila, with a third coming early 2018. Two years ago, they sold everything to travel around the world. They've been to 45 countries in over 150 flights. They document their adventures on social media as the bucket list family. Jessica manages all the brands, partnerships, press, travel, and finances for the bucket list family. Here we go. She loves exercising, nutrition, and cooking. She also loves dark chocolate, Michael Bolton, the Denver Broncos, Nike, scuba diving, bad ABC <laughs> TV series, gardening, and New Zealand. So welcome, Jessica. emailed me a while ago, like this summer, was like, I'd love to have you come speak sometime, and I like never know when we're in Utah. So this just worked out perfect. We're here for like a week, and I'm super happy to be here. So I just want to get to know you guys a little bit better. So y'all have husbands who are in the MBA program, yeah? Yes. yes. How many of you have kids? Oh, like, majority. Okay. Um, and how many are from Utah? How many are not from Utah? How many people are, is anyone from out of the country? Where are you guys from? Korea. Korea. Slovenia. Slovenia. Oh, super cool. Well, awesome. And so, wow, this is just really cool. I'm excited to be here. Hopefully you guys can gather something from what I'm about to share. Um, is there a light? Yeah, you want me to turn these off? Is that like a presentation button. mode or something? Presentation mode. No, I Just push that. a few. Just start <laughs> clicking. That's what I usually do. Maybe yeah. a different one. That's the other way. Other way. That's good, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Does anyone not know this? Has anyone, like, not heard of me or my family? I kept emailing <laughs> them awesome. all about That's awesome. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> no, then I'll, she gave a little intro. I'll keep, like, talking. So I'm from Denver, Colorado. Um, met my husband on my mission in Vladivostok, Russia. That one's my husband. He gained like 20 pounds right in his cheeks. He'd be super <laughs> mad if he knew I should have. <laughs> um, he will always tell you that it was some like scandalous story, but it wasn't. It was kind of boring. Um, we started dating when we came back to BYU. Um, got married. And my husband played soccer for BYU, and he also started a company called Scan. So during this time, I was working full time, um, and he was doing his thing. I wanted to be a little bit more transparent. I mean, we put a lot of stuff on social media, you know, but there's also a lot of stuff we don't share. Um, to this day, probably the biggest fight that me and my husband have ever been in was when Garrett wanted to try out the soccer team. And I was so mad. I was like, you're married now, you need to get a job. <laughs> like, you can't go be playing soccer. You know, like, you're not going to go pro. Like, let a NBA use a club to you or a summer pro team. Like, you're not going to. Anyway, so it was like, it was a big fight. And um, I was, work like I said, I was working full time. And he was still in school. And I went to work one day. And later that day, he came back and was like, I went to tryouts. So I tried out. And I was like, <laughs> I like, couldn't believe it. <laughs> And it really hurt, and to this day, it still kind of hurts. And anyway, he tried out, but he got cut. Uh, he didn't make the team. And I uh, felt really bad for him. And he had, um, right after that had happened, he started doing some web design, some web development. Um, he's an artist and has always done a bunch of stuff like that. And he started doing his own freelance stuff. And he started making some money. And so after that, I was like, OK, like you're doing good providing. Like, go ahead and try out again. So we tried out again, and it was like this big ordeal in our family. Like, you know, he's trying out for the team, even though I'm working, um, and he made it. And he worked his butt off to, you know, at BYU soccer is kind of this complex thing. People rarely, rarely walk on. So it was a very, like, good, big accomplishment that he made the team. 
So he makes the team, and over the years, uh, it was just really special to him, like how hard he worked, even to get onto the team, and then to get a starting position. Meanwhile, he starts this company called Scan here at BYU, three classmates. Um, he creates an app just for fun in a class, and long story short, he started to get a whole bunch of downloads, and investors started calling, and got a million downloads, and um, he ended up getting funded out in San Francisco. So, we moved to San Francisco. And uh, I was really excited to be there, and the plan was to be there for a few years, and he was doing this whole hustle. And after a year there, I was pregnant with my first, and uh, Garrett decided, you know what, I want to go back to BYU and play soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so I was nine months pregnant, and we moved back to Provo. Garrett got back into school and started playing soccer again. And then I had my first, I was pregnant with my second, and um, their company sold. Uh, Snapchat acquired it, and um, we moved to LA to work for Snapchat. And uh, we were there for about four months, and he decided, I'm not super happy here. I miss my youth. I feel like I'm like giving up my youth for this. And so, guess what? <laughs> we came back to BYU to play soccer again. <laughs> and I, I, I say this, I, I wanted to bring this up, I was telling my husband what I wanted to talk about. Because I don't know if you guys feel this way, like, I felt like for so many years, I, like, I followed my husband. And I helped him pursue his dreams, playing soccer, you know? Like, and he definitely proved that, like, I can provide for my family and I can, like, you know, work his butt off on the side to make a living. But what made him happy was soccer. And so, again, re-enrolled into BYU for the third time, played soccer, and um, I, I didn't necessarily want to come back. I was like, I feel like I loved my years at BYU and in Provo, but I feel like I'm going backwards. And so um, that's when he said, okay, let me go finish my senior year of soccer, and then we will um, we'll travel a little. Like we'll go, we'll take off for four or five months and go travel. And that's when I suppose the Bucket List family started. It was an excuse to move on and not you know, to be here for too long. And um, we ended up creating, I suppose, the Bucket List family. So for me, uh, it started off as like the next step. We didn't know where we wanted to grow. We didn't know where we wanted to raise our family. It didn't feel right building a house or buying cars, so uh, we just decided to travel. And when we decided to travel, we decided to sell everything. So we sold everything. Um, cars, furniture, clothes, and um, it, was, like, it was really harsh. Like selling everything that you have. And I wanted to share a story about these plates. So. I would, I mean, my husband, he, whatever he does, he goes like 110%. Like, he just goes hard. And I'm like, I'm the moderate one who's like, wait a second. He's like, <laughs> let's, you know, chill out for two seconds. And, uh, but he was like, no, we're going to sell everything. You're not just going to sell a few things. And there are these plates. I got these from my mom for when I was married. And we had moved, as you just saw, half a dozen times in and out of Utah. And everywhere that I went, I carried these plates with me because they were from my mom, from my wedding. And when it came time to sell them, I was like devastated. But I realized, um, you know, I like couldn't put a price on them. I didn't know how much to sell them for. And uh, it, it just, it was, it's an interesting um, exercise to sell everything you have and realize nothing matters. Like even though these were sentimental, they're just plates. And they had traveled with me for eight years of marriage and I used them maybe four times. Um, but, you know, things are just things, and it doesn't matter what we have. The things that matter are our families, our relationships, our knowledge that we gather. Um, so we've become these minimalists, and I love it. I never thought I would be this way. This is a picture of what I pack as we travel. Uh, I have some workout gear as well, but for the most part, a few bottoms, a few tops, and that's it. And it's the same thing with my kids. We each, they each own a few outfits, and it's the most liberating thing ever. 
to not own a lot of stuff. And I love that experience, just of owning so little. And um, this is a picture in Cape Town about six months ago. I worked really hard to find like the perfect travel gear. I had like best pants, long shirt, just like what I thought was like the best travel gear. We were in Cape Town and the next day after this picture, um, we got robbed. Our car got broken into and my suitcase, just my suitcase with all my clothes and all the kids' clothes, um, got stolen. And so it like rocked my world. I was like so attached, like you know, and like I just said, like you can get rid of plates and I can get rid of cars and stuff and then but when you own so little, like you become so attached to it. So I was so sad I lost these jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, you know, what really matters is not what we have or what we own. You know, we were safe, we were healthy, and <coughs> we were okay. And I just had to buy, I still don't own good jeans. <laughs> um, another thing, so I'm kind of wanting to just touch on a few, like, things that I've learned in my travels. If you guys have any questions asked, I'll just share a few things, and then we can just do a Q&A, or I can sit down if you guys have any <laughs> So, something for me, too. Is I am just uh, I feel like I was like the quintessential like Mormon girl, girl next door, like never really got out of my comfort zone. If you would have told me five years ago what I'd be doing today, I would have been just shocked. But I've done a lot of things over the last little bit that I'm pretty proud of. Skydiving was one of them. Uh, ah. Swimming with humpback whales in Tonga. Uh, bungee jumping in New Zealand. And this was just a video I wanted to, I'll show you a little bit of this video and then, um, so for those of you who don't know me, we document everything on social media and share a little bit of our journeys. <laughs> and then they have these metal. So this is in Fiji. So I'm like, right here, here. Suits and like armor, and they've got these like poles, and I'm like, 
like just kind of freaking out like what's you know like not only am I 60 feet underwater but there's like crazy sharks and there's this wall that we're supposed to stand behind or sit behind and they're like don't go over the wall don't put your hand over the wall don't put your GoPro over the wall and so you're just like and they're like oh, you all go down together so it was like pretty scary like I had been getting anxiety with scuba diving anyway so then to add all these like sharks to it I was like super anxious and I got in the water and right underneath the boat um, there were three or four just like little like nurse sharks and I was in there alone and I was just like <sighs> just start you know like going through my air freaking out and I like quickly surfaced and I tell my husband and I was like I can't I can't do this like and like in my head I was like if I don't go down right now I don't think I'll ever sleep with that again. Like I think if I like give in to this fear just once, I'll probably be done. And so I like went up and um, Garrett was like, okay, you know, like whatever you gotta do, just so, like get out of the water. And then like five minutes later, I was like, no, like I have to finish this time or I, like I'm never gonna get in again. So I jump back in and you'll see the video. I, I it, well, I mean, you don't really know what's happening, but I get in and I like kind of like, my tank and yell to my husband, and that's when I'm like, "Give me your hand." And so we go down together, and it was like the most epic dive ever. Just incredible. All those sharks were just beautiful and stunning and amazing. There was one part though where one of the tiger sharks like hit the wall and it all just rattled and. I thought I was going to die, but anyway, it was just one of the first times that I, I really was like, this is so just me getting out of my comfort zone and like overcoming a fear. And I've been trying really hard lately to be more adventurous, more fun, a more fun mom, a more fun wife, just someone who's like, just impressive, not only to like, for myself, you know, like, and for my family, because that's who I care about impressing. So that was just something that I have really worked on is just getting outside of my comfort zone and doing something that scares the crap out of me. And there was um, the coup, 
and then but there was a terrorist attack, and then there was a coup just a few weeks later. So we rerouted and went to Dubai, but we still really, really wanted to go to Turkey. Like, I really wanted to go. And I was really nervous just because of what you hear and read and, you know, things that happen. Um, and so it was a few months later that I, we decided it was okay to go. So we went to Istanbul, and um, it was interesting. Like, the whole time I was there, I was just like, let's cover up. You know, we're like, me and my little girl and these two blondes, even my son's pretty blonde. Like, I was pretty nervous. Um, and then we stayed a few days in Cappadocia, or in Istanbul, and then went out to Cappadocia. So you even know where Cappadocia is? If you've ever seen those pictures on, like, Pinterest or Instagram, it's like all the hot air balloons and all these, like, amazing peaks. It's, like, the most, like, epic looking, like, place ever. It kind of looks like Southern Utah, but really awesome. And uh, anyway, so we landed in Cappadocia a few hours south of Istanbul, and my mom, I checked my phone, and my mom has messaged me and says, I just saw there's a warning to get all Americans and Westerners out of Turkey immediately because terrorists are targeting them. They had just evacuated all the embassy families, and I just lost it, like was freaking out, like hyperventilating, like me and my husband both didn't sleep. Um, we stayed up all night, like, what do we do if, you know, we get kidnapped? What do we do if you get kidnapped? What do we do if someone, you know, just like thinking like worst case scenarios. And um, we were going to try to leave immediately. Um, and then we prayed about it and decided, you know, we feel okay. So we stayed another two or three days and then we flew out and had the most amazing time in Turkey. But the thing that I learned the most is I'm not saying that you know, that area of the world is not unsafe because there's some really crazy things going on. But yeah, we have, I would say, I shouldn't say a lot. We are have like 95% of like the nice people who follow us and then 5% of like the trolls out there who are just horrible. And when we first started, our audience started growing, um, I took it really hard. I hate confrontation. I hate it. Like I, I can't handle an argument with anybody. Um, if like a BYU sports game gets too heated, I'm like, I'm not here, I can't, <laughs> I can't handle this. So, um, so to start dealing with social media um, and you know, people saying things about me, about my family, was like really, really hard. Um, and, and it seemed that people were the meanest when you were trying to do something really good. Um, last year, we went to Nepal and we helped raise some money for, uh, to start a school. And we were working with our audience, and they were helping us raise $50,000 to build a school. And we were really nervous to do it, but really excited. We didn't know if we'd be able to accomplish this goal. And um, we just put a lot into it. But um, all of a sudden, like, the haters came out. And you're like, I'm just trying to do something good. Like, why is everybody saying so many mean things when I'm like, I'm just like, trying to help these little girls in Nepal? Um, but I'm grateful for those experiences and the thicker skin that I've acquired over the last two years of putting myself out there and learning. You know, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. It just matters like what you're doing, and what, you're doing and what you believe is the right thing and putting good out to the world. Um, so I wanted to just share those few lessons I learned. Being a minimalist has been a great opportunity for us. Getting outside of my comfort zone and you know, not always listening to what the world has to say, what the media has to say, and what people online have to say, been some things that I've learned over the last few years. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, I hope. Uh, sorry, I finished. <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> I just, I, I'm curious, like, what has your experience been with your family as you visited, like, the church, different places in the world? Like, yeah. What is it? What has the experience been like? Has it have you felt at home? Has it been hard? How have the kids responded? Like, how has that been for you? No, so we probably get to church, I would say, half the time, probably okay. twice a month. Just if there's not a church or if we're traveling on a Sunday or, you know, for whatever reasons. Um, but every time you go back, it's, just, it's like going home. Especially for me, like, the most special thing is hearing music. Like, as soon as you hear, you know, a hymn, even if it's not in English, you're just like, feel at home. Um, but something for me that has been a little bit interesting is um, because church is not always 
in my language, or it's not my home word. Um, my testimony's been up to me. You know, like my personal spiritual growth has been up to me, and the growth of my kids has been up to me. And that's been really difficult. I don't have a really study president. I don't have a visiting teacher, and um, you know, and it's brought us closer to Heavenly Father to realize like. I don't have the auxiliaries and someone to help me out. So it's just me and the Lord for the most part, you know. And you go to, we go to church because we take the sacrament, not because we're going to be able to give or get very much. But it's, it's been a really incredible spiritual opportunity and, like, learning curve for me to realize, like, <laughs> this is just up to me and what I make it with Heavenly Father, and I can't rely on anybody else. That's cool. That's cool. Um, so I personally struggle with, uh, like, putting myself out there on social media, and I feel like I have things I want to say, um, and I'm always thinking, like, oh, I should write an article or a blog about that, or I should post more pictures or something, and I'm always, like, afraid to, so I don't know, like, um, I don't actually know what it is, what, why I uh, struggle with that. Or have you ever felt that way, and how do you kind of overcome No, and I definitely do. We, My husband and I constantly kind of are discussing what we should say, what we shouldn't say, what we want to share, what we want to keep private. And, um, you know, initially, too, when we first started, it was a lot of the safety concern. You know, like, do I want to put my family out there? Like, do I want to put my kids out there? Um, but I would say, like, despite the trolls and some of the mean stuff we've gotten, like, we've, I've, we've benefited so much from it. We've done incredible things. We've met incredible people. We've stayed connected with incredible people. Um, and I think, uh, I don't think it's a bad thing to put yourself out there. Um, be safe and cautious about it, but um, we've greatly benefited, you know, in so many different ways by, like, putting ourselves out there. Um, and it is still a debate. What my husband and I debate a lot about what we want to share about the service we do, you know, and, like, do we want to, do we want to give in private? And that's some of my patriarchal, my my patriarchal blessing says is to like give without you know boasting about it and uh, but at the same time like putting good into the world is I mean it's what we need right now you know like we need more good and we need more positive we need more families we need more service that people can see instead of all the bad stuff instead of all the complainers instead of all the you know so we, we try to be positive and we rarely share our bad experiences we shared when we got robbed. Um, we don't share our kids' tantrums. Like we, we try to be as positive as possible. And maybe some people think that's not being like real, but we're just trying to put the good, the positive, and the happy out there. Um, so I've followed you for probably since close to the beginning for a long time on Instagram and love what you do. It's so inspiring and exciting to watch you and your family and see them grow and I just am so curious about logistically how you how you manage I have four kids and I get how hard it is to be a mom and um, how complicated travel is and I, I'm just so curious like what are logistically how do you make it work how do you find childcare when you're on the other side of the world how do you manage your life it, I mean it seems like you do it with such grace but I just am so curious about <laughs> I mean, so our day-to-day -day, um, is we try to create as much consistency and structure in a very, like, non-consistent world, especially for our kids, you know. Routine's super important. So although they're not in the same bed every night, they're still, they, when they wake up, they can still expect breakfast. Mom and dad work out. They're going to expect to, to read with them for a little bit. Then we do naps, and then we go out for a short activity, and then we come home and we have a bedtime, you know. Like, so we try to keep as much, like, structure and a lot of people are like, aren't you exhausted? Like, because when you go on vacation, you like hit it hard, you know, like you're like, I got a week, I'm going to town. But, you know, this is our lifestyle. So we, I mean, we do one or two activities a day at that. Or, you know, some days we don't do any activities. Um, and we realize we're not going to see it all. So we kind of just have to do what the kids enjoy. Remember, we were, in, uh, we were in Austria, we were in Vienna, and there was so much I wanted to see in the museums and just walking around. I was like, my kids don't want to do anything. That. like they will just die and all we did in Vienna was go to the park and so every day I was just in this like incredible city 
and like maybe I would go on a run by myself in the morning to like see a little bit of it. But at the end of the day, like all I can tell you about Vienna is there's a really good park, <laughs> <laughs> and that's like what we did. So like a lot of times it's it's just doing what the kids want to do and playing at the pool in our hotel or um, yeah, just going to the park. And then as far as like finding childcare and stuff, we try to stay at nice. We stay at nicer hotels because we work with. We learned that luxury brands have a budget for marketing, so that's why we end up staying at Ritz Carlton's in pretty nice places. But they always have really good, like vetted staff. So a lot of times they'll take our, they'll, we'll have a, a babysitter watch them that we trust. And then a few times, either friends or family, or if we feel good about leaving someone that maybe that we met at church, we've done that a few times. Yeah. My question kind of goes along with that. Intimacy, like how do you work that? Well, like when you're in a hotel room with your kids, and just sleep heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So do you like find you're with your husband just like alone? You'll do childcare or yeah, which and I wish we could do more of it and stuff. We still try to go out on a date and stuff <laughs> as often as we can. Um, but yeah, you just. <laughs> well, the reason I ask is because my husband is like so anti traveling with the kids because of that. And I'm like, hey, just so we need tips. And our kids have just become so adaptable, and I don't know, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> different subject. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. <laughs> but, um, I was just wondering on the same kind of page, is that how, like, do you cook when you go different places? Like, do you buy food everywhere you go, or do you just eat very simply? Yeah, so I prefer, I prefer Airbnbs. I think that's, that's my favorite mode of travel, is to be in a home where I have a kitchen and a washer and dryer and stuff. Um, but probably half the time we're in a hotel and half the time we're in Airbnbs. Which is a good mix. So um, we try to, I try to cook if I can. Um, and also just finding snacks. And like I've kind of learned what countries have and what they don't have and what my kids will eat because they don't have goldfishies and fruit snacks anywhere else in the world <laughs> except for here. So um, yeah, I would definitely say we should try to prefer an Airbnb is my like go to if we can. Yeah. So you've gone on a lot of flights with your kids and they're young do you have any suggestions with figuring out ways to work with kids when they're flying to lessen the amount of temper tantrums and hard times because they're gonna have yeah it's the age yeah and that's hard because my kid, like they're just used to it so like at the end of the day like now i think if we get on a flight now people like see our kids like walk on with their backpacks and sit down put the tray table down their headphones on and it's like <laughs> like they just know the drill but I think something we always we still do is every night when we do bedtime stories um, we talk about what's going to happen the next day on this travel day and make, an advent, make it an adventure we make it fun we make it we're going to this magical place and you're going to do this this and this and you're going on the airplane and making it fun and exciting rather than like you know stressing out or like telling them don't do this and don't do that um, and that's been really helpful and the kids like love it and so it was like an adventure we were all going on together rather than just just trying to survive this day um, so that definitely works really well and then just all the snacks all the toys oh oh and I would say it also just always your attitude always your attitude and like my husband and I, we each have our bad days, and sometimes one of us just really has to step up because the other's like falling apart. Um, and we know when those days are happening, but especially on travel days, like we have to chill out. I have to chill out, <laughs> like because they get so stressful, and the kids, and I, and I don't know, I get the moms just control the mood of the whole family. I don't know. That's how my <laughs> like if I'm cranky, then they're gonna be it. So I have to be positive. I have to be stress free and just like making it fun. And even though there's a tantrum, just trying your hardest not to like stress or freak out because that just makes it worse. Um, when you guys just did your 30 days at Disney, uh -huh. um, how was that? Was that like the best month of your life? I just love <laughs> so watching all your stuff and I... <laughs> so we just spent the last month working with Walt Disney World 
We went to different Walt Disney World Resort in 30 days. We had 30 stays in 30 days. And it was very cool. Uh, we were really nervous about it. We were nervous about getting sick of Disney. We were nervous about uh, having our content be pretty, like would people not want to see that? Do we not want to see that? <laughs> um, but it was really a really good experience. Disney took really good care of us. Um, they were filming us, so they were oh. we're always filming with our phones and our GoPros for our social media, and they were filming filming us on top of that. Um, and so it wasn't like, you know, sun up to sun down like at the Disney parks. A lot of it was filming and hanging out at pools and like just doing everything else that Disney had to offer. Um, but it was a really good experience. We we felt really blessed to be working on that project. So, so I'm. Having followed, okay, that's I followed when awesome. I found out you were that's coming. That's great. Because okay? <laughs> I, I don't really know much about yeah. like, what you said. But you mentioned that you sold everything. Yeah. But then you also mentioned coming home. So I assume that you do have a home somewhere. No home. So I, when I say home, I mean that's with family. Okay. So that's great. Yeah. That's my question. <laughs> I love the idea of being a minimalist, but it just kind of freaks me out a little bit. Like, I think about, like, what do you do in the wintertime? Do you not have coats for your kids? Or, like, how, yeah. do, you, how, do, you, how do you be a minimalist? So we, I mean, we, I should say we have a few bags of clothes here. We have a few bags of clothes, like, at my mom's house in Colorado. And a few at, like, Garrett's sisters in L.A. So, like, I mean, we have a few things. But then also the kids are growing. So we kind of just get new stuff. And, and also because we're wearing our stuff every day. We go through it pretty quick. I mean, we go, uh, I probably need to buy new clothes every six months because you just wear them to death. Right. So, yeah. I will go there. Yeah, go ahead. So what were you, would you say are the things that you, like, need? And everything else is just whatever. That you can the get things that we travel with that we need are our computers, our phones, and our cameras. Um, we... Uh, we, we try to be really in health and fitness, so we have our like workout clothes. We carry a blender with us. Have time to with us. It's a little magic bullet. And um, that's it. I mean, and just the clothes. That's pretty much it. Uh, oh, our kids each have a little backpack, and their toys all fit in their backpack. They know that if it doesn't fit, and they have to carry their backpacks on the plane. So if it doesn't fit, then they don't get to keep it. And I mean, they've been playing with the same toys, or you know. My little boy likes little cars and trains, and my daughter likes little princesses and Play-Doh, and that's usually what's in their backpacks, and it's been pretty happy over the last few years. And that's probably my favorite thing. I love not having little boys. I'm going to go home and throw away all my kids. Yeah. Okay, so I have heard I didn't know that you were going to watch in this room. Awesome. We're a homeschool family, and my husband said, oh, she's talking about traveling. You should go do this. So my question is, I mean, I assume now that your funding is a lot from like wanting to promote your own stuff. Yeah. But when you started, how did you find it? Because that's my one. Yeah. We can just. So when we sold everything, um, we made about forty-five thousand uh, dollars. We had a car, furniture, kitchen stuff, and, um, and that's it. I mean, so that that forty-five thousand dollars was our like runway. To, to travel and it and it lasted us about five six months I would say um, and then granted my husband did have a company and he sold it so we have some money in savings so it's like always like a fallback so when people are like should I sell everything and go travel the world I'm like uh, no <laughs> you know like we're kind of in a unique situation so I like I don't necessarily like wouldn't like recommend it but I mean forty-five thousand dollars got us very comfortable six months of full-time travel and Long story short, we took a nanny with us in the beginning, and it ended up being a nanny and her husband and her son. So there were seven of us traveling for the first while, and she, anyway, long story short. But, um, yeah, so it got us pretty far. Um, but that's, and, and now, now that we grew our audience, it was about that time, about six months into it, that we had a certain amount of followers that brands started sponsoring us, or a lot of times they would just comp our stays. Or flights or something, and then eventually, when we got big enough, then brands will pay you. So now it's like a job. So you're pregnant. Congrats. Thank you. It's a boy. I found that yesterday. So, how's 
also traveling been pregnant mm -hmm. and what are your plans with a newborn so we um yeah traveling in the beginning was a little bit hard um because i was sick i'm not crazy sick but you know like the typical like nauseous and just you want to die? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the first like 14 to average stuff. Like, so that was really hard. Like, and, and looking back to the, some of those countries that we went to, Norway and Iceland and uh, South Africa. Like, I don't necessarily have the best like thoughts about them because I just like, feel sick. <laughs> um, but now you know, the last few months, all of Disney. We were in Seattle. We were in um, uh, San Francisco. Like. I feel great. So like now I'm like all about it. And so the plan is to continue traveling till probably November. And then we're trying to figure out what's next. So we're looking to set up shop somewhere, have a baby, and slow down our travels. So we'll probably travel once a month, every other month. Mm -hmm. But Dorothy, my daughter, is dying to be in school. She wants friends. And we want that for her. Mm -hmm. So as much as we love these like full-time travels. My husband probably could travel full-time forever, but we both agree that, you know, she, our kids are getting to the age where they want close friendships. So um, we're looking at moving to Hawaii in December. Moving to where? Hawaii. Hawaii. That's, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to Hawaii next week to cool. figure that out. If anybody knows anything about delivering a baby in Maui, <laughs> um, I just feel like maybe it's something you grow into, but emotion like being on, like having your kids on camera all the time, you being on camera all the time, is this something you just get used to, or do you like compartmentalize? How do you pick and choose what you show? Like, I don't know, I feel like having a camera on all the time would just be taking emotional wear in here, so. Yeah. How do you, how do you do we, we definitely try not to be like the vloggers that are always walking around like this and have like a story to tell each week. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's like, we're going, I mean last week in San Francisco, we're going out on the cable cars and that's what we're going to document. Um, if there's something cool that's happening, my husband, he's just a journal keeper. He's always going to whip out his phone and report our kids. And I'm just used to that. He's done that since day one. Um, Disney, our, we went to Disney, and that was a little difficult having camera crew around you. Mm -hmm. That's not my cup of tea, mm -hmm. like at all. Yeah. Um, so that was like difficult, but um, we've just kind of gotten used to, I mean, like documenting our life, but at the same time, like it's work for us. So we try to have like our moments, like we need to go out and take pictures here at this, and that's what we're doing for this hour. So. It's not a 24 seven thing. Like, yeah. Okay, I don't know how this hasn't been asked yet, but if you could do like top three, like top five favorite places, favorite places, follow up on that. How do you like choose like where to go or what to do? Cause my husband says like, let's go to Colorado for five days. And I feel like I'm like lost in Google. Like, oh, what are like all these yeah. things you can do? So like, do you have any tips? Like how do you decide what to do? Um, initially when we first left, um, we knew we were doing the South Pacific and we each kind of had our like bucket list items. My husband wanted to swim with whales in Tonga. I wanted to see the Lantern Festival in Chiang Mai. And we wanted to go to New Zealand and then we just kind of filled in the rest. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's a little bit different because now we kind of go where the opportunity is. So if the, you know, Iceland Tourism Board reaches out to us, then we'll probably go there because they're going to pay for it. Um, but it's also a lot of like, hey, I want to go to Tonga, or I want to go to, um, my husband wants to go scuba diving in Belgium. There's like the deepest pool in Belgium, in Brussels. So we're going there. So like sometimes it's like, I want to go do this in Brussels, so who can I work with to get me there, and what can I do along the way? So we're like going to Paris, working in Paris, and then we're going to go do film set, or like work on some stuff in Amsterdam, and then hit Brussels. So now it's kind of like figuring out as a job. Yeah. The favorite places? My favorite place is New Zealand. I'm obsessed. We both speak Russian. I speak decent Spanish, decent Italian, and a little bit of, and I can understand what someone's ordering in French or something. You know, so like kind of some of those languages that sound similar. We've gotten by. 
like I, we've never left a country and like, I didn't understand a thing, like I didn't get anything out of it. Like it's, the language barriers have never been like an issue for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you deal with that with your new country? How do you force them to even try it? Yeah. We have a family rule. You have to try it. You don't have to like it, but you have to try this one bite. My daughter's great in it. She'll try it, and she's fell in love with foods that you would never think. But we also don't try crazy, crazy stuff. Um, we're not trying like spiders and <laughs> worms or whatever. Um, but. Yeah, they just have to try it. My son's definitely a lot more picky, so pretty much everywhere we go, you can find some sort, of, some form of chicken and rice or pasta or whatever. And that's hard, definitely. I know a lot of it is obviously your perception, but what do you notice about your kids having having lived this life like for good or maybe bad? Yeah, uh, they're definitely uh, super low maintenance when it comes to sleep. Like I can be like Vanilla, here's a towel and a pillow, and he'll be like, yeah. Which we definitely have been like training him that way, you know, like because for a while we were like he, we wanted him to have space, so we'd be like, here's your little corner in the bed, oh. mm -hmm. or whatever. And uh, so yeah, definitely um, they're used to just kind of going with it. Um, they're really, really great at making friends really fast. But at the same time, it's very hard to say goodbye. Um, my daughter will make friends and become best friends in an instant, and then when she has to say goodbye, she's just devastated. So that's really hard. Um, and they're very brave. I feel like they're very adventurous. Um, my daughter's a great swimmer. She's four years old. She's a great snorkeler. She'll try new foods. She. I'm really impressed with her. She's kind of my hero. She's she's a really good girl. Mm -hmm. Sorry, about how long do you spend um, creating the videos? Like how long does that take to edit? Too? So my husband is the kind of creative. He takes all the pictures. He edits all the pictures. Um, and they've gotten longer. And like now they're probably 20 minutes or so. Um, he probably spends 20 hours a week. Uh, like it's a lot of work, and that's. And that's been one of the hardest things to adjust to. Like, I worked and I quit my job right before having my daughter, and I didn't intend to go back to work. Like, that, I was always like, no, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and that's what I'm gonna do. And because this has evolved into like this family business, and now I'm working, I think probably 20, 30 hours a week, that's been really hard for me. And um, honestly, we feel like it's just been a great opportunity, and we wanna take advantage of it. I wanna be grateful for it. So I've had a hard time you know, sometimes not being able to play with my kids because I have to like send some emails. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's just it's been a lot. Of, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And my husband's gotten really good at editing and taking pictures and stuff. So, so you mentioned you're into health, and you guys try to make sure to exercise regularly. How do you maintain a healthy diet, traveling? Because that seems like a hard thing to do. Oftentimes. Yeah. I mean, and again, when you're on vacation, you're going to hit it hard. You're going to try all the new foods, you know. Um, but because it's just become a lifestyle over the years, we've just, after a while, I was like, I can't have croissants every morning for <laughs> breakfast or whatever the breakfast buffet is, especially at these hotels. So we've just, I, I try to be as healthy as possible 85% of the time. And then I kind of give myself those, like, dinners and those desserts. Um, and I mean, like, yeah, I, I don't, I try not to be too hard on myself, which I often do, because I would like to be healthier and I'd like to be more fit, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what, I'm not doing this forever, so I'm just going to go eat those. <laughs> um, going off of health, what is, I know um, Garrett had Zika, yeah. right, at one point, but how has everyone else's health been as you're traveling on you know, airplanes? Everybody else's health has been really good. And I, I firmly believe that because we've traveled so much, our kids' immune system has not. been good. Oddly enough, every time we come back to the States is when we get sick. Um, Garrett had Zika and Dominica. That rhymes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and we've had a few uh, falls and stitches. Um, one in Nepal, one in Thailand and one in Maldives. 
and those were okay. I mean, like super scary, but like the hospitals were great. We have travelers insurance, um, and that has covered that. I mean, I just send in the bills, which is only like seventy dollars for an ER visit, anyway. But yeah, they just reimbursed me, and that's been amazing. Do you travel with any medicine, like Tylenol? Yeah, and just some Tylenol and things. some cough drops and a few like essential oils and stuff. Cool. Yeah. So you're gonna go back when you're starting this out. What advice would you give yourself? Or like, what's something you did, like a pat on the back, and maybe something you would. Just what advice would you give? Um, advice at first would probably just to be like. Like it's a good thing to put your get get out of your comfort zone, and like it's gonna be okay. You're gonna be safe, and kids are gonna be safe. Um, and yeah, just to do what's right for you and your family, and not listen to anybody else. Kind of get getting that thicker skin. And I'm proud of myself. This is these are my two friends from freshman year, <laughs> and like this is so not something I ever would have thought like I would ever do. Like I'm so like moderate in every way. So the fact that I'm like doing this, like I'm really proud of myself. Just the, yeah, I'm doing something so out of the box. This is my husband, like he's always reaching for the stars and I'm always like, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm just proud that I've done something so, so different. Yeah, I so. just have a follow up to that. How do you, how do you know when to support your husband when he's reaching for the <laughs> 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 Yeah, he's <laughs> like, like, what are your conversations with God like? When you're like, um, I don't know, like, how do you deal with that? Support your husband, but like, also be real. Yeah, what's the balance? <laughs> right? I don't know <laughs> <laughs> My husband is always thinking so big, um, and we're a good balance. Like we're a really good team. Like he would be dead without me. <laughs> sure, yeah. He'd be dead. Um, I mean, like when we scuba dive, like he doesn't check his tank. Like so, I have to be like, you are out of air. We're going. Okay. <laughs> He'd for sure be dead. So it's just like you know real, realizing that it's the yin and the yang and you give and you take and I mean it's just a lot of compromise too like my husband says like how about we go live in Hawaii for one to three years and then I'll let you choose where we settle down okay we're guys we're going to Hawaii <laughs> so I mean yeah it's been and then it was the same thing with you know Garrett wanting to come back and play soccer for the third time and you know it was like okay well then we're going to go travel you know so it's just been a lot of like give and take and um, still trying to do at the end of the day what's right for our family. Like I said, I think my husband would travel forever, but we both agree that like our kids need stability, our kids want school, our kids want friends. So that's just something we'll sacrifice. And, and I'm curious to see what happens over the next few months. Like I'm afraid that we're going to settle down, and then after two months of driving Dorothy to school in gymnastics, I'm going to be like, why am I not, you know, doing something else? So like I hope it goes okay. Like I pray that. I, we can transition and figure out how to live um, the best of both worlds. Yeah. 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 So yeah. How do you make wise decisions? I mean, like, priority wise, you guys spend like many offers or like many things to choose between like a lot of things, and how do you make, like, you know, what's the priority? Um, yeah, I think just what's most important to us, what we value the most, and what feels best. Um, prioritizing the family, religion, health, those are kind of, I would say, our, our top priorities, and whatever fits into those is what we do and what we take. So, um, you started traveling when Mel was really young, yeah, about one. So how did you just decide where to go with such young children? I mean, were you concerned at all about like health issues or like yeah. for such young children? And how did you figure yeah, that out? I mean, I was definitely concerned, but it was just kind of, I learned you can get diapers and wipes and formula everywhere. Um, like I said, we didn't go anywhere too remote. We were always in bigger cities, especially we spent a lot of time in Australia, a lot of time in New Zealand when he was little. 
Um, we got the immunizations we needed. And um, I made sure to have evacuation insurance. I was super, I'm still always like crazy nervous about natural disasters. Um, so just trying to take the like, precautions to like be safe, but also to not let like my fears hold me back. Okay, I just had the thought, potty training. <laughs> <laughs> how did that, how, uh, like how do you do that when you're out, you have like a little amount of clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, Dorothy, we potty trained my daughter before we left, and my son is, he's not ready. He's, we tried in Cape Town a few months ago, and he will literally sit on the toilet and just be like, it's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, he's like starting to get there just this last week. He's started to say, I've got to go to the bathroom. But that's going to be a challenge. I mean, potty training is so much worse than changing diapers. Yeah, <laughs> diapers, yeah. yeah. Find a restroom and exactly. <laughs> and to be in a foreign country when he says, i got to go right now. Yeah. That's nice. He's a boy. He's a boy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's going to be a challenge. Especially, like you said, with like laundry. I wish I had tips for you. I've got nothing. <laughs> Are your extended families very supportive of your travels and how they always been? Yeah. Garrett's family, Garrett's mom has a travel television show on PBS. Garrett grew up traveling. And uh, so his whole family is like, go get it. My family is much more conservative, like me, and um, they're very nice and supportive about it. But my mom and dad are always like, when are you coming home? Like, you know, like, it's kind of subtly. But it's also interesting, my family um, isn't really into social media much. So a lot of you might know more than some of the details that they don't know, you know? Um, so that's been interesting to like, for them to see, you know, this whole different like side of the world. My mom doesn't get social media at all. <laughs> And so when she's, like, when she's like, she's the relief side president, she's like, these girls in my board say they know who you are, and she <laughs> just can't even handle it. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a family kind of like that, and so I was just wondering how you bridge the gap with them, because if I were to move out of state from where my family is, yeah. I have done, and a lot of times it's difficult to go back home and then leave again, yeah. because they pull harder with women back, so I just yeah, I, def I definitely think they kind of guilt trip us. But my family is like the passive aggressive where they'll just like be silent or like not give you like, yeah, they'll just like, okay, sure. <laughs> you know, and I think they've gotten used to that, that I marry someone who's like kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Do you get any souvenirs? I know souvenirs. Yes. Um, no. No, we did, so we, our last night at Disney World, we stayed at Cinderella's Castle, which was like, you like can't put that on your bucket list, it was one of the coolest things, and they gave us a glass slipper. So we oh, took home this oh, eight pound oh, <laughs> <laughs> we were like, we can't, we have to take this. But yeah, we just, just the pictures and stuff, I wish we could, but because we're always on the road, yeah. So I guess, this might be a good last question, but how have you seen your family come together and become knit and so much closer as you've had the opportunity to spend a lot all of time, time together? <laughs> all, all time yeah, together. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of us. I, I don't think many families could or would want to spend that much time together, especially a spouse. Like, you know, I've, I've heard some people be like, oh, I can't even stand a vacation with my wife for five days. I'm like, that's the saddest thing ever. Like, you know, and Garrett and I are pretty proud of ourselves that we're like, I'm not sick of you yet. Like, how are we not sick of each other? Um, but we just, you know, we love our space. When we first took off, we had a nanny with us, that family with us. And after about two months, we just decided we want to do this alone. Like, this is our, like, adventure. Um, and uh, we've just kind of learned a few times throughout. There was one time we were traveling last year around the Caribbean, and uh, we were in Miami, and we got the, there was just all this confusion with the flight, and we missed our flight, and our luggage was lost, and Manila fell down, and we had a bloody nose, and we. I, we were a mess, just like an absolute mess. And I like turned to my husband and I was like, 
let's just go home. And then I started crying and I was like, we don't have a home. <laughs> and then I just kind of looked around at our like mess of a crew, the bloody Manila and like, and I was like, this is home. Like, it's just the four of us doing our thing and it, like nothing else matters, like even if we're all in shambles. And so like, just that time together has been so, so precious. We're so grateful for it. I'm especially grateful that my husband has seen so much of our kids. I'm, I know a lot of young families that, you know, you guys probably included, don't, their husbands don't get to see as much as the kids. And Garrett and I are eternally grateful for the time he spent with, with the little kids. Um, but it's just brought us closer together going through the crazy flights and hardships and, you know, trying to accomplish something together as a family. Okay, I think we're going to close.